Ooh, pretty colors. <laughs> You're not going to lose that on the shop floor for sure. <laughs> um, this is something we got in from Ramstead Manufacturing. This is a wheel offset guide. Mm -hmm. You guys can see that in camera one. This is a, uh, a kind of a neat deal. This is all 3D printed. And we're going to be doing a video on how to use this thing because we need to do the offsets on the 64 Falcon hardtop mm -hmm. so we can pick some wheels to go with the RRS suspension that we're going to be putting on the car. But this little thing right here this morning put me in mind of where we are at today as opposed to where we were at five, 10 years ago. Yeah. And that is the oncoming of 3D modeling and printing. On a personal level. On a personal level yeah. and also on a, on a larger scale yeah. commercial level. We'll talk about personal first because We've had a couple of things that we've done. The video mm -hmm. that we did on the engine stuff, if you yeah. guys want to go check that out, it's in the description below. You'll be able to go and check it out. You 3D printed some stuff mm -hmm. that we used for, for ring grinding. And yeah. how much would that tool have cost if we'd have bought it? Uh, ring grinder, the manual ones are like 50 bucks on Summit, something like that. But an actual nice Goodson uh, automatic, like basically their own Dremel. Mm -hmm. um, that one's like 200 bucks, I think. So you're looking at a couple hundred bucks. How much did you print that one up for? Probably $5 plastic. No, actually less. Yeah. But you had your time, but you actually didn't have your time in it. Yeah, no, I just save, hit the button. Yep, gone. There's a lot of that kind of stuff coming out too, because you got the, we did that. Then we also had the uh, valve and lifter. Yep, that tray, tray. That took 22 hours to print, but like that was about maybe $10 of plastic. And you didn't have to be there for it. Yeah, no, you just leave. <laughs> it does its own thing. They're, they're pretty awesome. My thought process here is to kind of go in this direction and look at it from the idea of, as we go down the road within the next few years, more and more of these are going to become available because, you know, it used to be horrifyingly expensive yeah. to buy a 3D printer. Yes. It's now in the neighborhood of, what, five to 700 bucks for a small one? Oh, no, it's way cheaper. Oh, my God. I got, mine's a Ender 3 Max, which is the biggest Ender 3 uh, print bed you can get, and it was 350 bucks. Not on sale. So you get 350 bucks for a printer and, and you can print stuff. That's about a 12 by 12 print bed. And there's all kinds of stuff out there for them in the automotive side of things too, right? I mean... Yeah. The automotive isn't as big as far as like pre-made 3D files and stuff, just because there's not many automotive guys doing it. But there are a whole bunch of stuff, like the 65.6 Rally Pack for the Mustang. Mm -hmm. That's available. Seen a bunch of different type of like air filter boxes for your own cold air intake kits. I was thinking about this the other day, even with your small printer, we want to do custom logos yep. for the back of the wagon. We want to call it the Wagon mm -hmm. or the Swagon. The nice thing is we could print either one of them out <laughs> on a 3D printer. I designed the lettering in my, you know, because I have an art background. Mm -hmm. Finally going to pay off, Mom and Dad. <laughs> um, so I've got the stuff to do in my head how to make yeah. the logos look right for a Fairlane to mm -hmm. look almost like the original fonts. And then we could print them out on your printer. Yeah. And they're not going to be big, long files and throw them on the back of the wagon and go, nah, I don't like that one. We'll do this one. Mm -hmm. I don't like that one. We're going to do this one. Yeah, the lettering would probably take less than four hours to print. And that's what I was thinking about it. I mean, you, four hours to print, you're going to be printing it up yeah. and you're just going to walk away from yep. it when it starts. So that's kind of cool. So we're looking at it from that aspect. And that got me thinking about small parts. Mm -hmm. There's probably stupid little things like GT badges for, for certain cars that you just can't get them for. Yeah. But you can 3D print that stuff, yep. clean it up, polish it out, maybe send it off to a plastic plater if you want to do that and have the ABS plastic plated. Or like you were saying, there's even plastics that if you wanted to do some kind of crazy yeah. wild color combination, mm -hmm. you could do that too. Yep. So, I mean, there's a lot of things like that. And then the next side of that to me is, well, the guy says, well, I don't have the, the artistic ability to do all that stuff. You can hire it out. But the handheld scanners are getting to where they're yeah. getting cheap enough to almost do that as well. Yeah. You could see an honest cottage industry, in my opinion, come mm -hmm. up out of the 3D printing arena for the classic car stuff. Yeah. And even just the scanning of it. Like, you can scan somebody's car to give them a CAD model. That That's a business model in and of itself. Sure. Because... Think about doing suspensions. Yeah, suspension, engine mounts, uh, swap kits, everything. Yeah, because you've already got an accurate model of, yeah. of a basic 65.6 Mustang yep. with the 3D scan. And you could probably scan three different cars and get an average yep. out of the three cars. Yeah, and mesh them together. And mesh them together to make a final yep. file for it. And then you've got the ability then to go in and actually work with the 3D system 
I'm like, all right, I want to swap a mod motor into this car. You scan a mod motor, then... We know people that are doing it, and there's young kids that are coming up doing that stuff. So you guys out there that are younger, that are smarter than us old guys with the white hair, we may know how to put the car together, but you can make the parts really cool for us to do so. Mm -hmm. So that's a something as well. What I wanted to talk about real quick, though, was where I think industry-wise this could go. Mm -hmm. Because you and I in the house were talking about 65, 6 Mustang headlight buckets. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. how horrible <laughs> they are, <laughs> the, the reproductions are right now. Yeah. If you want to get them, you can get them. Don't. <laughs> Find an old set. Yeah. Just go there. Okay? Just, I mean, we've had a couple of people that we know on Instagram trying to put them on there saying how horrible they are. But what if? Mm -hmm. What if you took and got a good set, a really good set, 3D scanned them. Yep clean up the model, make it real nice. And then put it into a 3D printer. Yeah. Even the Inconel printer could probably do this stuff for like the backing section that's yeah. going to be holding up a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. It would be costly at first, but think about where that heads in the future. Yeah. Inconel is 3D printed with laser weld. It's a powderized Inconel that lasers weld the pattern together. So then you tell me about in the house, there's even a, a, a manifold, a turbo manifold? Yeah, uh, I saw one that was a 2JZ that they catted up the whole turbo kit. So all the piping, where you normally have to cut up sections, make a header kit, all that stuff, they just catted it. They had a 3D model of the car, 3D model of the engine, cylinder head. All of that can all separate. They know the distances between all the two, all the space that they have between the hood, when it closes. Because you can also animate all of that stuff. So you can open the hood, close the hood. I'm going to have half inch of clearance between the top of the turbo and the hood, all that stuff. But they, they Inconel printed the manifold and it bolted right up. Perfect. Header manufacturers, if you're watching 3D modeling, it's going to be your best friend yeah. because then, you know, you can design a set of headers that will fit with a TCP rack. You can mm -hmm. fit with a, an RRS rack. It'll fit with a, 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 a Unisteer rack, yeah. you know, or just a stock steering box. Mm -hmm. You put all those dimensions in there. I'm willing to bet there's companies now that you can give them a 3D file of a header that you need built and they can manual bend the pipes in sections that you need. I think they, that's really the future. I think if if companies will start looking at what is available in the 3D market to help them better manufacture parts mm -hmm. because for instance we just got in a hood from AMD yep. that we were um, we're going to be doing on Manic Mechanic and I have to wonder, is that hood pulled from an NOS hood where they used to do, used to you would have to destroy a new old stock part mm -hmm. to make the part. And I wonder now if they go in and they just 3D scan it yeah. and they don't have to do any destruction to the part. The part's still a good part. Yeah. Because if that's the case, then you're going to start seeing your manufacturing quality of the part come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I could imagine that, I mean, I'd get probably five hoods, scan all five of them, compile them all together, and then you have one accurate model. Yeah, you have one middle baseline yeah. on it. I think that's the future of manufacturing for classic car parts is they just get a car in, they get three cars in, yeah. and they, they do things off of that. They do, like if you're going to say do inner fender aprons or you're going to do mm -hmm. an A pillar or whatever, you scan three cars, you pull the part, and then you start dissecting that part in the 3D model and cutting yep. it apart in there yeah. rather than wasting the time of cutting a car apart and destroying an automobile just to make a part for those cars. Yeah. Um, no, 3D modeling is the way of the future. This this is the, the, way. Way, the way of now, I should say. This is the way. Yeah. It's not coming, it's already here. It's already here. I just don't think enough people in the industry are using it yet because it is pretty expensive yeah. when you start getting to the level of industrial because you're talking about CAD capable computers yeah. that can take that 3D model that's being pulled from the scanner. I mean, we see TV shows using them all the time to make a part. They'll mm -hmm. scan something in and then they'll make a part from it. <laughs> There's actually a kit out there to turn an Xbox Kinect sensor into a 3D scanner. You can pick one up for about 20 bucks, but it takes like 10 hours to build the thing, but it works. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's where it's going. I mean, I watched a TV show a little while back and it was one where it's like set in three different time traveling things mm -hmm. or whatever. But the one timeline that they were in, the girl worked at a store that was a 3D print store. Yeah. Like you, you would go in there and you say, hey, I need a, you know, a 
a flavel gear for a 1952 John Deere tractor and mm -hmm. they would type all that information in the 3D scans out there and said, okay, you can come back tomorrow and pick that up about three o'clock. Yeah. You know? It's definitely easily possible in the future. When metal 3D printing comes around to where it's actually cheap and accessible to consumer market, because right now it's still expensive. Like that Inconel manifold, I, I would bet $2,000 to have that printed. Sure, and I, yeah. but I think here's a case too where you think about the Inconel printing, let's go back to the headlight bucket for a 65 mm -hmm. Mustang. Inconel printing the, the base bucket, because you could do the headlight door in plastic and that would be yeah. fine. I don't think, because it's not under any stress. The backing piece is what's yeah. under stress. So you make that out of Inconel, but if you're making, if you have, what, 15, 20 uh, printers that are the Inconel printers working on that. Yeah. The cost per is going to go way down. It's going to go way down. Because you're still paying, I'm not sure, I'd have to look at what NPD's charging for that headlight bucket set now, but the ones that are available are not great, yeah. but they're there yeah. if you need something and you can't find an original set of buckets. And that's getting harder and yeah. harder to yeah. do. Especially for a reasonable price. Yeah, because everything's going yeah. up. Because we were talking about this off camera, and this is kind of related but not related. The dash pad that we just got in for the 69 Fairlane, mm -hmm. they're not out there. Yeah. You know, and if you find one, you're paying five, $600 for an a okay yeah. one over a thousand dollars a lot of times for a, a really nice really one. nice yeah. one an nos type or a really good use to put in a concourse type car yeah so is it perfect no but it's available so that makes it good <laughs> right but i mean but if you do like i said if you took three new old stock headlight door assemblies mm -hmm. the base assemblies scanned all three of them in and took the baseline middle of what all three of those are and then printed them and had a number because didn't you say now there's even a printer system where they basically it's like an assembly line yeah there's like a, a, the z-axis is like a treadmill basically so it can just keep rolling off parts was, you can set it up to continuous print on certain certain things so i mean that's a, yeah because that's where that would be at in my opinion if you have that kind of a printer set up you're printing six seven of them at a time yeah. and they're just coming off the conveyor belt and some guys standing there just taking them off the conveyor belt when they're done. And the nice thing also about 3D printing is the ease of changing something in the print. It's just you print one more. Like once you're casting stuff in a pot, pot metal, you really can't change the dyes very much. Right. It's a big process to change the forms and the dyes. It is. In a lot that. of money. Yeah. Whereas 3D print, it's just going to CAD, changes the dimension a little bit, hit print again, and the next one's different. I wonder if they'll ever come around with something like ink and cylinder heads and that kind of stuff. But I don't oh, think... Could you imagine? <clears throat> that'd be wild. Because then you can start working on port configurations inside of the cylinder head. Uh, I mean, you abs they absolutely could. Um, I mean, they're 3D printing rocket engines out of ink and So it is rocket science. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just, when I got that thing in, it hit me. And I started looking at it and I'm thinking, man, think of all the things yeah. on classic cars that could be made out of. Just in general for your, like, not just automotive, but your personal life and everything. Oh, yeah. the, what can be added via 3D printing. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. nuts. I mean, and I think there's, it's still, it's kind of like, you know, the early days of firearms, whenever they were doing flintlocks and every one yeah. of those was an individual piece. But as time went on, the machining process has changed yeah. and made things more in, so that, you know, you could take a barrel off of that rifle and put it on yeah. that rifle. Um, and anything like that, you know, any of the furniture or whatever, you know, as time goes on, you could take the leg off of that table and put it on that table and it's yeah. going to fit just, just right because they're common. Yeah. Uh, and I think that the aesthetical side of 3D printing will be the only problem for a little while. There's going to be the, the, the marks from the printing, but as the, I think as that gets better yeah. and more refined and as they keep playing with it and you, you know. And how much time do you want to spend on the print? Because you can print something that the standard is uh, like 0.2 millimeter uh, per layer. Right. The really nice fine quality is 0.1 millimeter. But you can put a really big nozzle on there and print 0.4 and get it done in a quarter of the time. And it'll actually have better strength. But Except it'll look like something from Minecraft. Yeah, it'll look like spaghetti. Just 
for like a quick working model, it would work good, but it wouldn't look very good. <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably like it just because yeah, of yeah, old yeah, yeah. caveman yeah. looking stuff. My kid made this. It looked like somebody with a Play-Doh extruder. <laughs> <laughs> My kid made this in class. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, that's really it. I didn't have a whole lot other than this today. We've got a couple other things we're trying to do around the shop here to prep up for what's coming next on the 67 Mustang back behind me. We are going to do a bust out. We are going to do some videos that are basically us just slamming away on this car to get it ready for my friend Kyle to come pick it up or at least come by and be able to, to drive it around a little bit because he's never really even driven this car before. So we're trying to get everything busted out on it in one week long series. I don't know that we're going to be posting those every day. Uh, we'll probably still be breaking some of them out and doing some other stuff with it, but that's coming. We are going to be doing a kind of a cool little series where we're just working because apparently that's what the algorithms on YouTube like. Now don't <laughs> stress if you are a guy who follows us because of our hardcore how-to. That's not going anywhere. This is just something a little extra that we're going to be throwing into the pot on this car just to see how it performs for us to get our numbers up so that we're making, you know, a little more money because we don't do this just for the love and fun of it. We do love what we do, but we don't do it just for that. Uh, this is how we make our living. So we're trying to make a little more money because the boys are becoming teens and feed me Seymour. Yeah. It's like that big plant it just wants to eat everything and then you know he's like can i have four more pieces of chicken please uh, i only ate one and i'm a 60 year old man that likes to eat so it's like all the food is just being sucked out of the refrigerators it's scary just open the doors <laughs> it's bad it's really bad like you know one of jackson mm -hmm. he's running camera today jackson behind camera one today He's like, there for a while, he wasn't eating hardly anything. I'm like, all right, man, we're okay. And then all of a sudden, he's like, can I have a couple more pieces of chicken, please? I already had six. Yeah, I'm still hungry, though. Comes in the morning with that big-ass bowl, <laughs> bowl of cereal from Friday. Chris. <laughs> man, we ain't got no milk. We ain't even got no milk. Great movie, Friday. If you're offended by bad language. Just don't watch it. <laughs> uh, if you're offended easily, yeah, don't watch yeah. Friday. If you have a good sense of humor and you like that kind of thing, it's a funny movie. It's gold. <laughs> it is gold. So many classic ones. <laughs> All right, folks. So that's it for this week. Um, do me a favor. Go out and check out the Patreon account. We have that basically established as a way for you to say thank you on a monthly basis for what we do for you every week on this show. It also is paying Darren's salary, which if he has to be, you know, he's like a young guy. He's got to learn that that if there's no money there, I can't pay him. So that he's getting money out of this, but it's because, you know, that's, that, anyway, let me start that over. You might go to this camera for that. All right, that's our show for this week, folks. We are gonna be talking about Patreon right now, the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me on Zoom. It is a way, Patreon is, for you to say thank you for what we do. If we on a continuing basis have done anything to help you with your car like we've helped you build your car and i've had tons of people write in and say i would not have done this had it not been for you guys then that is a way for you to say thanks to us on a monthly basis you don't have to be at the ten dollar a month level uh, with the videos and what we meet on a monthly basis although it is kind of cool that we're doing that because there's gonna be other things coming in with that we're gonna be doing doodles i'm gonna be making doodles available to you of your car if you're in there and win the raffle for that Quarterly, I'm going to be doing a color doodle for people. So if we, you win the quarterly uh, raffle, I don't know if they call it a raffle, because I, I don't know if I can call it a raffle <laughs> legally. Whatever we're going to call it to make it legal, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be doing mug giveaways, t-shirt giveaways, all kind of fun stuff on the Patreon account. I'm going to try to jazz that thing up and make it stoked a little bit so that it's more nice for you guys to be in there other than just saying, hey man, I appreciate what you do for me on a monthly basis on the show. But Another thing that we have that is amazing to all of us that we all love and know the name of, and that is Super Thanks. <laughs> the best idea with the worst name that the guys at YouTube have ever come up with. Gosh, I wish they had called it something else, but that's what we're stuck with. If you like what we do on a one-time basis here on this show, and you say, that video rocked my world, I did not know that, you guys deserve $500. I know you're probably not going to do $500. Please. <laughs> but if you want to, 
If he said that they do $500, somebody does $500 and that goes in the bank account and it's there and I can pull that money out, we'll do something. I don't know what we're going to do for him, but we're going to do something. Hell of a burnout. Well, yeah, so. whatever. I don't know. The truck, we know the truck will do a burnout yeah. now. I don't know for how long. We'll blow something up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, it's super thanks to the way for you to thank us on a one-time basis. And I guess that's it. Finally, folks, be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. So next next week we're gonna be. I gotta I gotta work on the Falcon to get where we can bring it back over here because I forgot that I didn't adjust the oh, camber yeah, setting on it, and the tires went. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta adjust the camber on Should've it. Should've so seen it when he pulled it out. That was sketchy, <laughs> even for me. I didn't even think about it, man. It's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Handling kind of funny, though. Uh, so I didn't adjust the camera settings correctly. Yeah. I hadn't even tightened the bolts up at all. I just didn't even think about it. I pulled it out and took it around. <laughs> so now, the driver's side tire is out here, and the passenger side tire is in where it's supposed to be. <sighs> Could have wrecked some Camber stuff. gang. He's got some hideous camera, man. <laughs> I love this suspension. That's the bad thing about doing what I do and knowing what I know. Mm -hmm. I watched this video on Instagram of a guy with this new suspension, and he's turning the tires out, and like the, the, the camber gain on it on the inside tire mm -hmm. is horrible when he's turning it. And I'm thinking, correction. But you can see it's sitting on the ground, and only the in only mm -hmm. that much of the outside edge, that much yeah. the outside edge of the tire is less rolling resistance. <laughs> It is. <laughs> Let's tire I bet wear. that thing pushes Only into a corner. Only a small part of your tire Woo! wears. That was a crazy looking thing. I'm like looking at it going, why? <laughs> is that supposed to be good in your bank? <laughs> no. It's good in someone's bank. <laughs> <laughs> the guys who spend the money. Mm -hmm. Probably them drift people. Yeah. They probably don't want to do that. They don't want the thing to handle great. They just want to go around the corner and back in and slip yeah. out there. Every road racer I know when they watch those videos are like, oh, what a dumbass. Anyway. Any suspension purist is screaming. <laughs> Me, I'm like, no! <laughs> what are you doing? Anyway, I'm gonna go watch him drink a beer because I'm still <clears throat> still not drinking. Sad. This is a sad day when I can't drink a beer. <laughs> <laughs>